Good morning, and welcome to church. Can you believe that we're already three quarters of the way through August? Where has the summer gone? How has it gone by so quickly? How did I not spend more time fishing? I don't get it. We want to uh, spend the next little bit today talking about a biblical character named Gideon. All summer we've been talking and speaking about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And Gideon is one of those characters. And again, if you grew up in church and going to Sunday school, you would have heard the story about Gideon and the trumpets and the pots and the 300 men and the fleece, all that stuff. But the uh, gist of the story is this. The children of Israel are being oppressed by a group of people named the Midianites. The Midianites were raiders that would come in at harvest time. The children of Israel, the Israelites would have harvested their crops and their food and getting ready for the coming year. And the Midianites would sweep in and uh, take everything. They would take the crops, they would take the food, they would take anything of value. Uh, probably people too, for slaves. And uh, they would just raid through the territory, leave and come back the next year at the same time. And this had been going on for years. And the people began to call out to God. It only took them 20 years to figure out that maybe we should ask God to deliver us from this and save us. And the story of Gideon starts with Gideon himself hiding in a cave, threshing some wheat, hoping that, you know, if he does it in this cave, nobody will see, he'll be able to hide it, and he'll have food for the coming year. Keep it safe for the Midianites. And suddenly this man appears. The Bible tells us it's the angel of the Lord. The a theological word, the pre-incarnate Christ coming to speak to him. And uh, Gideon's not aware of this. He just thinks he's another man. And, the, and, and, and God greets him with, welcome, greetings, mighty warrior. Gideon's going, what? Mighty warrior? I'm hiding. I'm afraid of these guys. I don't want anything to do with them. And God tasked Gideon with raising up an army to deliver the people from the Midianites. There are 100,000 of them, according to the Bible, at this point, raiding through the land. So Gideon says, okay. He gathers up 32,000 men. And God comes to him and says, mm, that's too many. If you win the battle, you'll feel like you did it yourselves, and it wasn't me. You got too many guys. So Gideon says, okay, anyone who's afraid, you can go home. And uh, so 22,000 men leave. Still left with 10,000. And God says, I'm still too many. You're still going to feel like it was your strength, your power that delivered you from the hands of Midian. So they come to a stream. And the men are thirsty. And Gideon kind of keeps track. And and the men who, who walk into the stream and, and reach down with their hand and drink out of their palm, he keeps. The ones who get down on their hands and knees and, and, and stick their faces in the water to drink, he sends home. And at the end of the day, he's got 300. 300 against 100,000. Now what is he going to do? Well, not only does he only have 300 guys, but his battle plan, is kind of unique. They have swords, but Gideon says, what you need to do is each one of you get a, a pitcher or a clay jar, a torch, and a trumpet. A trumpet? A torch? How are we going to fight a battle with that? And Gideon's plan is that they're going to surround the army of Midian at night, up in the mountains, up in the top of the hills. The lit torches will be stuck inside these clay pods, so that they'll be, you won't be able to see them from a distance. And at a certain point, every one of the men will blow their trumpets. They will uh, crack open the jars so the torches will spring into life. And suddenly the army of Midian will see all these torches around them and think there's a great army attacking them. Which is exactly what happened. The Bible tells us that, the, the, that they, this happened and threw them into a panic. And they began fighting with each other. And at the end of the day, or the evening in this case, 300 men defeat 100,000. You can read about it in Judges chapter 6. 
But I want us to kind of center in on to a specific point. Judges chapter 6, verse 11. This is the very beginning of the story where the angel of the Lord, God, shows up and talks to Gideon. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak of Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abizirite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders our ancestor told, ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go out in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? So the first question is, where is God? You ever ask that of yourself? You know, God, where are you? You know, you've done amazing things in the past. My mom and dad, my grandparents told me stories about what you did. I hear other people talking about how you answered prayer in their lives. Hey, you're doing great things somewhere else. I keep hearing stories about all these wonderful answers to prayer that are coming for other people in other places, on the other side of the world or, or some other place. But right here, right now, my life, where are you? With everything that's going on in my life right now, everything that I'm going through, my health, my work, my finances, my relationships, where are you? Where is God? Right here, right now, in this moment. That's what Gideon asked. Really? The Lord is with me? Well then, how come I can't see it? How come I'm hiding in a wine press while those Midianites are running roughshod over my country? How come we hear the stories about what you did for our ancestors, but nothing seems to be happening right now? I kind of share something here. God doesn't get angry with Gideon. Doesn't break Gideon over the coals for his lack of faith or doesn't even reveal himself fully to Gideon until a little bit later in the story. God understands. And he's not going to get mad at you. It's okay to ask those questions. It's okay to wonder. Because God chose a regular guy like Gideon Someone who's afraid, someone who's hiding in a cave, someone who had serious doubts, someone who was afraid, as we read on in the story, he tries at least two times to get out of having to do this, uh, and even when he finally commits himself and he's got the 300 men and they've got to the Midianite camp, he actually, God arranges for him when he sneaks into the camp just to see how big it is, good idea, let's really get depressed. Uh, God arranges for him to hear this conversation between two random soldiers of the Midianite army who talk about how Gideon is going to come and destroy them. Someone who felt like he was a nobody. His response, who am I? I'm the, my tribe is the least in Israel, and my family is the least of my tribe, and I'm the least of my family. Gideon was insecure. He was fearful. He had low self-esteem. He had doubts. He was a person just like you and me. And God used him. He can use you. Your doubts? Where's God? Your fears? I can't do this. Your insecurities? I'm just not good enough. Your lack of power and position? Do not disqualify you. God's first words to Gideon were, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And his words to you are exactly the same. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. He wants to use you, an ordinary person, 
to do ordinary th to do extraordinary things just like Gideon.